Hello everyone, today we are going to be doing the file or data storage components challenge from Frontend Mentor. So if you head over into frontendmentor.io for slash challenges, you can search for this challenge. You can click on it and then we can begin. I'm just going to click on restart. And then it's going to take me to this other page where I'm just going to say download starter, which is going to download the starter files for me. So once it downloads the starter files, you can see that the zip file is right here. And I'm going to navigate into my downloads folder. And I'm going to get the file load data storage component and right click on it and then just say extract here. And then it's going to extract into this folder, which I'm going to right click and say open with code. So a new instance of Visual Studio Code is open and you can see that we have the design files, we have the images, we have the git ignore, the index HTML, the two readmes and our style guide. As we begin, then please subscribe to the channel if you're not ready and ring the notification bell so that you're always going to be notified of when I upload a new video. So for this project, we're going to be using Tailwind CSS for our styling. So the first thing that I want to do inside here is I want to create a new file called index.css, which is going to be the entry file for our CSS. And then once I do that, then I'm going to go inside my index.html and link my index.css file. So right below this, I'm going to say link this into index.css. And then I'm going to cut these two lines out so cut them out oops. and then paste them inside here and save this add a space and then i'm going to remove the styles here the style tag and then the rest of this can remain but i'm going to change this into my website can't even spell my website and then change this to my name and then for the target blank here i'm going to add a rel of no referrer so no referrer to prevent cross-site scripting and you know what i can even copy this down here so that even this one opens on a new page and then before i save this what i want to do is i want to install tailwind css so using ctrl and j i'm going to open up my integrated terminal in visual studio code and then what i'm going to do is this i'm going to navigate into the tailwind css installation website the link is right here so tailwindcss.com forward slash docs forward slash installation and then just using the Tailwind CLI, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say npm install dash D. So just copy this command, paste it inside here and let it run. And so once this runs, then you should have a node modules folder created inside here. And then once that runs, then I'm going to go ahead and copy this once again. So copy this and paste it here and let it run. And you can see that that command creates a Tailwind config file. And so next we are going to do this, we're going to copy this line, copy this line, and then inside our Tailwind config file, then we are going to paste it inside here. So paste it in. And so this is the line that checks all our files for Tailwind CSS classes. We are going to be changing this in a moment, but I want to show you the error that we're going to get first so that you understand why we're going to be changing it. And then once we have that, then I'm going to copy these three lines and notice how this is called input.css hours we have called ours index.css so make sure this is very important for the next step so once you copy those three lines then i'm going to paste them about this Oops. and so paste it and save it and then now we are going to do this we are going to copy this command which is going to run our tailwind cli build process right here so just copy this command copy this and then paste it inside here and for me it's going to run first of all so you're going to it's going to throw an error and then we can see that the error space says that uh, the input file in source input css does not exist so in order to fix that then it's pretty much obvious we need to access or we need to target rather the index.css file so how we do that is because we don't have a source folder so we can remove this right away and then just by hitting my up arrow key I'm going to rerun this command except that now I'm going to remove the source and this. So it's going to say dot slash index.css and I should rename this now into index.css. And then this part right here just says that the output after compiling the index.css file will be put inside a dist folder and inside an output file called output.css and you're going to see this being created. So I'm going to run this. And it's going to throw us another error, I think. Okay, it doesn't throw us an error, but it is an error. Now look at this. We have the dist folder here, and then we have the output.css. 
and the output that CSS is basically they tell you it's CSS file. Now, before we can use this, we need to go back inside our index.html and then we need to link the output.css file inside here as well. So what I'm going to do is right below this, I'm going to say link this into dot slash dist output.css. So just add this line in, which means it's going to be accessing the out the tailwind CSS output.css file. Now I'm going to save this and I have an extension called live server, which allows me to launch a local development server. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click and say open with live server. So you can go ahead and install live server from your extension tab right here. Now look at this. It says that da, da, you have used 800 GB uh, of your da, 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 whatever. Now look at this. I'm going to try and add in an H1. So place this to the left and this to the right. I'm going to try and add in an H1 here. I know. Let me just grab this line, place it inside an H1 and save it. And now look at this. Oh, it doesn't throw us the error I was expecting. Let me try and add a class here. So class equals to oops, class equals to text dash eight XL. Okay, now look at this. When I try to add it in tail on the classes, then you can see that nothing happens on the screen, even if I try to reload it. Now the reason for that is right here inside our tail config file that we don't have a source folder so this is targeting the wrong file right so what we're going to do is we're going to do this we're going to remove everything here so starting from here just remove this so that now we're going to be accessing the dot slash all files so this means all files which have an extension of html or js so if we add tailwind css in javascript then this line is also going to check for the classes inside there and we're using dot slash because it is basically in the root of our workspace. So save this and then now we should try and reload it. Now look at this. Now the tailwind CSS class applies. Now before we continue, because I know I'll forget, inside the git ignore, just make sure that you have node modules ignored because if you try to go commit this to GitHub, then you're going to commit over 5,000 items. You don't want to do that because when someone clones your repository, they're still going to have to install node modules again. So right on top of this, you know what, I can do it on the bottom as well. I'm just going to say ignore node modules as well, so node modules. So add this line, which is going to ignore this node modules folder. So we can save this and then we can now close this and then we can begin to build out our application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside here and open the design file. And so I've opened the design file on a new desktop so that I can scroll between them just like this. Now, what we're going to do is the following. We need to go inside our style get markdown file and we need to check for the font that we're going to be using and for the colors. And we have the body has a font size of 14 pixels. So we're going to specify that as well. So let's go ahead and get this font. It's called railway. We have the 400 and 700 font weights. So just click this, open this up. We don't need these fonts, we can remove them. So remove this as well. So railway, we, we want the 400 and 700. We use it, regular 400 and the bold 700. So use the import tab, just copy this. And then inside our index.css, we can paste this on top. And then we can specify that let the body have a font family of railway with a fallback of sans serif. And then specify the font size here to 14 pixels and 14 pixels because of this here. You can as well go ahead and specify the font size here to be on the HTML. So you can do this as well. This is also acceptable. I mean, I, I think this is even the the uh, the preferred way. So we can, we can close this page and then we can place this back to the right. And you can see that now our font changes and then you can place this to the left. And of course, let's go ahead and remove this 8XL from here so that now the font reduces. And now we are going to do this. I'm going to grab everything inside the body. So this entire thing, just cut it out and place it inside a D with a class of container. And container because I just want to know what I'm dealing with. And you know what, I can even remove it. And then I can say this, I can say let this have a max width of about XL and uh, I'm going to say that MX auto which is going to place equal margins on the left and right which will cause it to move to the center 
and then inside here this needs to have a background color so you know what let me just go ahead and give it a class of container and actually that's a bad idea because Tailwind has a class of container so we're going to do this we are going to do, let me say container fluid this comes from bootstrap so container fluid module x and you can see that now this is limited to the center so let's go ahead and do this for the container fluid class we're going to do this i'm going to say that for container fluid fluid and let me see we have oh uh this is not one single container i was imagining it to be one single container but it's not so let's go ahead and do this let me give this a class of uh let's say what are the colors inside here let me just call it dark blue so dark dash blue and then inside here i'm going to give this a background color and the background color we're going to set the background color to this this light blue here and so let's say let's go ahead and try dark blue to see whether this is it so dark blue is that it i think that should be it and then let's go ahead and use this class so dark blue let's use it inside here you know what? it's not even said here but just for the sake of tasting let's say dark blue dark dash blue okay so there is our color and then now on the body we're going to place in this color so copy this and then let's specify that the body should have a background color of this and there we go so there is our body background color and then this is our uh, our two let me call these sections the background color for them so inside the index.html we're going to do this i'm going to move the dark blue color from here and then this h1 text here i'm going to cut it out and place it inside an article and then above this i'm going to add in another article and this article is going to be having these three icons so the logo and then these three icons let me see whether we have them let me place this full screen so images bg desktop so bg mobile okay and then we have the favicon we have the icon document the folder the upload and the logo so inside here we're going to do this i'm going to have the first image the image source is going to be images forward slash logo which is going to be the top logo so logo.svg and then below this we're going to have a ul with three list items and each of these list items is going to have an image the source for the first one is dot slash images for slash which is the first one so it's this file let me see the document so icon dash document document dot svg and then the second one is going to be dot slash images forward slash icon dash folder dot svg and then the third one is going to be dot slash images forward slash upload and then we don't need to add alt attributes for this because these images are decorative and then so this is going to be our first article and then this article now i'm going to give this a class of dark dash blue which is going to apply the class of dark blue that we have inside here and apply this background color and then now we can go ahead and space this out and then let's just save this let's see what we have on the screen and would you look at this we have that and then now for the second article i'm going to give this a class of dark blue once again so dark dash blue and we should have our second article right here and then let's see how the second article is structured so we have the title here and then we have this progress bar and then we have this white thingy and then we have 0 GB and 1000 GB so we are going to do this we are going to do this this is going to be our H1 so this can re remain so you have used wait what you have used 800 GB of your storage so this part here doesn't exist in the H1 so below this H1 look at this this is what we're going to do I'm going to create a div inside here and then I'm going to create an article now the reason why I'm structuring it right like that is because the div is going to be this background color. See this background right here, the one that is not filled, is going to be the div. And then the article is going to be this color that has the linear gradient. And you know what? I should add another div which is going to be this white ball. So let's do that. So inside the article, I'm going to have a div inside here which is going to be the white ball. And then once we have that, then below it, I'm going to add 0 GB and 1000 GB. 
so let me say below this div let's say below this div okay below this div we're going to say, say this we're going to have a ul with two list items the first one is going to say 0 gb and then the second one is going to say a thousand gb 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 okay so remove this from here and then now look at this this white section is going to be positioned absolute within this bigger article so remember the article that we gave the class of dark blue we're going to position this white article absolute within it and you know what instead of being within the article let me position it absolute within this div the parent div that holds that has this background color of this dark one so we're going to do this let's just go ahead and style it out first of all let me access this h1 and place this text inside a span see how this is whiter and then this is gray so let's go and do this grab this 8, 815 gb place it inside a span and then inside the h1 we're going to do this let's just say text base with text white with an opacity of dash 75 and then inside the span let's go ahead and give this a class of opacity dash 100 and let's say text dash large to make it just a bit larger than uh, than the actual h1 let me place this to the left and then we can save this and we should see 815 gb but this doesn't work here the opacity 100 doesn't work because this is placed on the parent so let's do this if i set this to be inline block will that work inline block that doesn't work so let's remove it from here let's just remove it and then now what we can do is we can set this to be font bold and then let's do this let me say tracking widest okay not on the span but on the h1 so on the h1 let me say tracking dash widest to increase its letter spacing just a bit okay that's bad let's say tracking wide mm, that's bad let me just remove it <laughs> yeah okay and then we are going to have this let's begin styling this first article and remember that these articles are placed within this div so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go inside this div and i'm going to say display this div as a grid with grid columns grid dash columns I can't type oh my god grid, grid columns dash one with a gap of eight to separate them out is that correct so article one and article two and oops i did something wrong i did something wrong i did something wrong okay you know what what uh article one article two then the div let me grab this div move it outside okay there we go there we go there we go and then we're going to have this so let's go ahead and say actually you know what i haven't even checked how the mobile looks like so mobile is one on top of the other okay so mobile we're going to have this so the logo and then these three icons so inside this first article in the class of dark blue let's say padding or round of eight with a rounded dash uh right so rounded on the right of full let me see how this looks okay rounded on the top right top right that's too large let's say rounded top right of i think the maximum is 4xl no it's 3xl 3xl is the maximum that's even small so let's go ahead and do this let's do this I'm going to add a custom class here called rounded dash right and then what i'm going to do is inside my index.css right below this i'm going to say that for the rounded dash right class then i'm going to say border top right radius and set this to about let's say forum forum is 64 pixels let's say 6 rem. so that we're going to have this and then now we can go back inside our index.html inside this ul we can say this give this a class of margin top of 10 to push away from the logo there we go and then inside each of these list items so one two and three 
I'm going to give this a class of PG slate 800. Actually, no, that, that's not even the correct color, but we can work with that for now. And then back inside the UL, I'm going to say display this as a flex with items that start and justify dash start with a gap of five to separate them out. Uh, reload, reload, come on, reload. There we go. And then I'm going to say this inside each of these list items. So just grab this and say control D. So one, two. And I'm going to say give this a padding all round of six with a rounded dash large. Reload, why aren't you reloading? Okay, there we go. So padding is a bit too big. So grab these three. So control D, one, two. And say give this padding three. That's looking almost nice. And you know what? What I can do is this. I can give each of these images a fixed height. So let me try and go inside here and here. And here, give these images a class of height dash 10. Height 10 is a bit big. Let's say height 8 or height 6. And then let's also say width of 6. So they're going to have a fixed width and a fixed height. Maybe, maybe. And then now we need to add we need to add the background color of the body inside here. So I'm going to remove this PG of state. So control D, one, two. And then I'm going to say BG image here. And then let's access this custom class. So save this. And then below this, we can just say that for the BG image for the class of dot BG image, we're going to add a background color of this one and save it. And there we go that is a correct background color and so now let's go ahead and do this we're going to go inside the div inside this div and then inside this div we're going to give a padding on the x-axis of h to push these two items inwards and then now i'm going to say this i'm going to say give this a height of screen which is going to push it to the center but that is wrong why doesn't that work because i need to say place item center so place item center and that is not correct. That is an issue. Hmm. Okay, so being that this does this, then I'm going to remove this. And then I'm going to remove everything here. And then now to the end, you know, let me remove this from here. And then let me, let me use flex box. So display flex. And then flex of column. Replace them one on top of the other. And then, uh, okay. It hadn't reloaded so flex of column and then i'm going to say items dash center and justify dash center okay and item center is what shrinks them together so you can remove it from here so remove item center there we go and then let's say height of screen which is 100 people heights to move it to the center there we go there we go and then we can go ahead and do this let's add a gap of eight to separate it out gap not gap up and fantastic now i think this has a rounded border as well so let me see yeah it does have a rounded border so i'm going to do this so i'm going to go inside here so inside this first article and i'm going to give this a class of rounded dash large which is going to add rounded borders here but it doesn't affect this one because we have specified this in our css file and then now let's go ahead and deal with our second article so for our second article, we have our H1 here, which is already styled well. And then we need to add a padding of it to push this inwards and a rounded dash large to add the same uh, border radius on this article as we added on this one. And then now what we need to do is this. I'm going to go inside this div and give this div a class name of what is it? BG image. BG image is the one that added the, the background color on this images so bg image and then i'm going to say give this a height of two and a width of full so that it goes to the end and then i'm going to say this i should not i can save this and you should see it there we go so there it is and then with height of two is a bit small so let me say height of six how is it height of six looks okay height of five and then let's add a rounded of full so rounded dash full to make it rounded on the edges there we go and then let's say margin on the y axis of about eight to push it away from one another and you know what? that's a bit too big let me see yeah that's a bit too big so let me say margin of four and then i've just noticed that this text is aligned to the center so let's go back to the h1 and say text center 
subtext center which is going to push it to the center if it reloads there we go and then now we are going to go inside this article give this article a class of linear gradient so linear dash gradient and that's because we have been specified a linear gradient in our style guide so copy this part here and then inside our index.css below this we can access the class of linear dash gradient and then inside here you can set the background to linear gradient and then we can paste this in and then remove this tool and place in a comma and then here we need to grab this so let's grab uh, this the entirety of this thing and then let's just say that it is a linear gradient that goes to the right so 90 degrees and then paste it in and we should see it of course we don't see it i mean how did i forget that so instead back inside this article we're going to say this we're going to give this a width of three quarters width dash three quarters which and we should now see it of course we don't see it because we have a height of we should give it a fixed height or some fixed padding okay now okay there it is so we have it here now notice that this linear gradient is applied inside the div so what we want to do is this let me try and add margin on the top of two to see what happens nothing happens margin on top of 10 okay so it pushes downwards with the div so what i'm going to do is this i'm going to say position this absolute and now watch what happens now it is positioned absolute within the div and then now i can go inside this div and give it a class of relative class of relative so there we go so that now it goes back to its original form and then now let's see let me bring it to the top by two to see what happens okay this thing is not reloading okay top of two and top of one there we go it's almost right and then let's bring it to the left by two we should now push it inwards there we go and then let's give it a rounded of full so that it's also rounded on the edges like so and you know what let me give this now a height of six to see how it looks and then we need to push this downwards therefore so top of two mm, the 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 um what's it called the heights aren't really all that well so let me take this back to height five and bring this back to top one and we're going to have that and then let me bring it to the left by one so that this edge is almost similar so that we're going to have this and then now in this div is going to be our white ball so we're going to do this give this a class of bg white and then i'm going to give this a height of two and a width of two and then rounded dash full to make it circular so rounded dash full let's see what we have we have it right here can you see it so it's right here now what i'm going to do is i'm also going to position this absolute and bring it to the right by by one so that it appears here should be it let this reload why isn't it reloading so look at this now it is right here and then let's bring it to the top by one which is good which is going to push it downwards and top of one isn't looking all that good so let me give this a custom class of ball and then inside my index.css i'm going to access the class of ball here and then i'm just going to say bring it to the top by one pixel or by two pixels how is that two pixels is almost fine you know what let me not even specify the widths and heights inside here let me do it myself inside my index.css so i'm going to say give this a width of four pixels four pixels and a height of four pixels okay that's too small let's say 10 pixels let's uh okay 10 pixels let's bring it to the top by one pixel mm then reduce this to eight pixels there we go there we go see that now that's looking nice much better and then now what we need to do is this we need the this zero to appear here and a thousand gb to appear here so let's go ahead and do this let's do this inside this ul let's go ahead and give this a class name of flex okay class not class name we are not in react of flex and items that center and justify dash between let's see justify between but they don't go to the end why don't they go to the end hmm why don't they go to the end 
let's do this let me remove this from here adding a paragraph here that says 0 GB and then adding another paragraph that says 1000 GB okay and then inside this div let's give this div a class of flex and items that center and justify that's between there we go and then inside these two paragraphs give this a class of font bold and text white there we go and then let's see what you have okay so this looks nice so what we need to do next is just add this white section here that says 100 and gb 185 gb left so let me try and add it a div here with an h2 that says 185 gb and then inside a span we're going to say left wait how is it 185 then gb left is inside the span so gb left then remove this from here let me see what happens okay and then let's go inside this div give this div a class name a class okay class class let me see if i've used class name anywhere anywhere else without realizing so class name okay nowhere so a class of bg white and rounded dash large rounded dash large let me see and then we're going to give this a fixed width so width dash let me see how 52 looks like okay, actually that's too big width dash 20 okay with dash 40 and then let's give this a height of about 20 mm. height 20 does this even resize let's go inside this is to give this a class name a class oh my god a class of text slate dash 900 let me see and then let's say font dash bold font bold and text dash for xl oops something's wrong my internet is not down so okay there we go and then let's be inside this span give this a class of font normal normal and then let's add an opacity here of 75 so that, that happens and then let's say text base to bring it back to the normal font and then now let's go inside this div and then inside this div we're going to say display this as a flex box and then items dash center and justify dash center we should now bring this text to the complete center and let's reduce this to about height dash 16 and by the way the reason why it goes to the perfect center i don't know whether you you, you know it it's because of this fixed height so if we remove the fixed height here then that happens so add it in and then we're going to have that so if you increase this height to about 96 and make it bigger then you're going to see that okay reload come on you see that it's always going to be to the center so this is back to 16 and then now what we need to do is this div needs to be positioned absolute and then brought to the center so i'm going to say display this as absolute and then bring it to the left okay you know what i can't do that inside here or at least i don't know how to do it yet so i'm going to give this div a class of bg white and then inside my index to css below this i'm going to say that for the bg white class dot bg white then i'm going to do this i'm going to say position this absolute and then bring it to the left by 50 percent and then transform and translate on the x-axis by minus 50 percent which is going to send it perfectly and we're going to have that now it has messed up with this it has messed up with this let me disable this okay so it has messed up with our our thingy our white ball okay why does it mess up with that is it because of uh let me see let me see okay remove oh wait wait a minute uh oh you know what it has messed up with it because bg white here oh is also on the ball look at this because it's a tailwind class how did i even miss that so let's go ahead and give this a class of how what should i do uh let me just say bg-185 <laughs> i hate thinking of class names i really hate thinking of class names so this should be bg-185 there we go so that now this is centered here and then this is not affected and then we can increase this and by the way, the reason why this is not affected is once again this is positioned as relative do you remember how we positioned as relative when we were dealing with this linear gradient as well as this ball so now we need to increase this to look 
how does it look on bigger screens to look like this on bigger screens and then we need to add in our background so let's deal with our background first because it's easier now what i'm going to do is for our background i'm going to go to the top right above the body so not above the body but right below the opening body tag and then i'm going to add a div inside here a div and then this div is going to have a picture tag so picture and then the picture tag takes in a source media attribute and so what i'm going to do is i want to change the uh the the image that is displayed when we exceed 768 pixels so the source set for this is going to come from dot slash images for slash bg dash desktop dot is it jpeg or png jpeg or png so it's png so desktop dot png and then we need to add our image tag which shows by default this is coming from mobile because it's our mobile image and then when i save this then we should say something here which should break it there we go so it breaks it as you can see so now what we need to do is just bring this downwards and position it absolute so inside this div i'm going to give this div a class name of absolute a class of absolute class come on class absolute and then bring it to the bottom by zero we should bring it downwards and it doesn't bring it downwards so bottom zero and then let's say left dash zero there we go there we go and then let me also add a negative z index so minus z index of 10 should we do it there we go and then let's say with dash full we should now bring this image to the end but it doesn't bring it to the end because with dash full is not applied on the div it should be applied on this image so class is equal to with dash full bring it to the end if this reloads reload uh okay that's interesting so it doesn't bring it to the end hmm let's say let's add right of zero here let me see okay so that breaks and then okay there we go so bring it to the left by zero and right by zero okay there we go there we go fantastic now let's go ahead and scale this up for mobile screens for for desktops actually so that now where we had our flex column here then what we're going to do is this we're going to say that for large screens, then I want the flex to go back into a row. We should place these two items side by side. And then I'm going to say that for large screens, I want the item center so that these come down. There we go. And then I'm going to go inside this first article. And then I'm going to say that for large screens, I want the flex of one so that it takes up uh, not actually flex of one. It should say with dash full. Wool has one as two else. And that does nothing. Has this reloaded? Okay, there we go. So with dash full does that. And then just copy this class. And then on the second article right here, you can just paste it in. So with dash full, we should place this to have a full width. But it doesn't. Is that correct? It does not. And it doesn't because we have limited something here. This is such a small limit. So let's go ahead and increase this to about, let's say, how does this look? That's quite big. That is big. Let's say about 6XL. Okay, that's too big. Wait, has this reloaded? There we go. So 6XL is much better. And so we are going to do this. Let me try something. If you see it in the video, then it worked. If you see a weird cut, then it did not work. Okay, so let's do this first of all. Let's reduce the width of this because it's a bit too big. So where we have this first article, then instead of saying this to be with full, let me say with dash two thirds. So two over three. How does this look? Mm, two over three, let's say with dash half. Make it even smaller. Yeah. With dash half looks almost correct. How was with dash two over three? Okay, let's just do with dash half. It's going to bring it here. And then now what we need to do is bring this text back to the left. So on the H1 here, we now need to say that for large screens, then text left, bring it back to the left. And I don't know why Tailwind is keep, keeps doing that. So bring it back to the left. And then we need to position this one to be on the top right. So let's go ahead inside our div. Where is our div? I don't know what our div is right here, which we give a BG185. So inside our index.css, we are going to do this. We're going to add a media query. We're going to say at media for a min width. 
of 1024 pixels then i want to access the bg185 class and i'm going to say bring it to the top by zero let me see how that looks so bring it to the top by zero which means this needs to be relative let me see where this div is so this div is inside this article so this article needs to have a class of relative relative so that now this one is going to go here there we go and so now let's bring this to the right so inside our index.css we're going to say this bring it to the right by zero which is should bring it here if this reloads uh what how did i do this did i say left wait it should be inside here so left to 50 percent uh hmm. <laughs> let me try something let me bring this to the right by 50 percent and then let's scale this down to see that make sure to make sure that nothing breaks so nothing breaks okay let's do this this is going to say left and then here we're going to bring it to the left by zero as well and why does that do that i hate it so let's say bring it to the right by about uh what did i have i have a padding of eight here right padding of eight all around padding of eight is what 28 pixels 28 pixels let me disable this uh okay okay you know what let's do this bring it to the left by let's say calculate 100 viewport widths minus 28 pixels 28 pixels where is it <laughs> it's outside <laughs> it's outside okay <laughs> so let's not say 100 viewport widths let's say 100 <laughs> percent there we go there we go so 100 percent so 20 pixels is still too small so let's say about 200 pixels that's too big so let's say about 150 nope let's say wait how how is 200 too big and 150 too small what okay so oh it's the logic so this should be about 50. <laughs> what am i thinking 100 pixels it's a lot of trial and error as you can see okay so 100 pixels is correct now what we need to do is bring it upwards just a bit so bring it to the top by minus let's say about i don't know about 50 pixels too big let's say about 40 about 30. there we go and then now what we need to do which is the final thing is we need to add our downward facing triangle so we're going to say this for the triangle we're going to go where we have our background our background is this one right and then right below this h2 this might break this and you know what i think it is most likely going to break let's have in here a div and let's give this div a class of triangle and then save this let's see what happens nothing happens okay nothing happens okay fantastic so let's style this out now what i'm going to do is above this i'm going to target the div with a class of triangle and a display none on it okay and the reason why i'm doing this is you're going to see let me just comment it out and then i want this to display as a block element when we exceed 1024 pixels so below this i'm going to say that for the class of triangle we're going to say this display block first of all display display block and then i'm going to say position this as absolute and absolute because we want it to come on we want it to position right here on this on this um what, what's this thing on this white div and so we're going to do this position it absolute and then bring it to the bottom of zero so that it's on the bottom of the div and then bring it to the right by zero so that is to the complete right and then let's say border left so border dash left we're going to say 25 pixels and solid and transparent and then let's say border dash top let's say 25 pixels and solid and white save this let's see what we have if it's going to work you can see that it's right here can you see it can you see it's a it's a bit the uh, like it's distorting this border radius so that works so let's bring it to the bottom by minus 20 pixels bring it downwards and there we go would you look at that there is our triangle now the border left of transparent is what like makes this not appear that's why this happens and would you like that that looks pretty pretty nice now just to make sure on small screens uh nothing happens okay so nothing happens 
which means even if I have this inside or outside, then nothing's going to change. Okay, fantastic. So I can remove this. Just remove it. And then now what I'm going to do is we're going to create a GitHub repository for this, and then we're going to submit it. So let's go ahead and go to GitHub, and then let me open Netlify, where I'm going to deploy it. So on GitHub, I'm going to create a new repository. And then this new repository, I'm going to call this what? Let me, let me call this Philo Data Storage Component Dash YT Create Repository. Copy this link and then just open our terminal. And then now we can close this. So shut this down and then close all of these files. And then I'm just going to say git init and then git add all and git commit dash m let's say initial commit dash project complete and then let's say git remote add origin and paste in this link and then git push dash u origin main which should push it to this branch and then we can log into netlify so let this finish pushing and then let's log into netlify And then let's add a new site. So import existing project from GitHub. And we're calling this Philo data storage component. Let's just make sure that this repository is actually there. Okay. And then let's deploy this. So loading, loading, and then deploy site. Deploying. And then let's change the site name here. So change site name. Let's say TSB Sankar. Let's say Philo dash data dash storage dash component. And then save it. And then it should have deployed. So let's open this link. And we should see this on the screen. So this is working correctly. So let me copy this link and then let's go ahead and submit it. So let's say submit solution here. Let's see the live site URL is here. The repository URL is this one. Copy this, paste it here. And then the title is going to say mobile fast Philo data storage component in vanilla. Okay, not vanilla, in HTML and Tailwind CSS. There we go. And then let's just say submit solution and wait for a moment and then it should submit it. There we go. And then you can say view solution. And our solution is here. Look at this. And then the design. Oh, sorry. This is our this is our solution. And then the design is here. Okay, so we should have made this part a bit bigger. But yeah, would you look at that? That's looking pretty, pretty nice. Looking pretty, pretty nice. Okay, so that is going to be the end of the video. And if you enjoyed it, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.